Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all here. Good to be here. And uh, let's go ahead and open up our time in a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for each one of us here. Father, we thank you for the blessings that you give us. Father, we just lift this time before you. We do uh, ask your blessings on this time as we fellowship, as we sing, as we enjoy the, uh, the celebration of Christmas. And Father, we just lift us all before you and ask your blessings on this now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's great to see everyone. Merry Christmas Eve. <laughs> And it's such a beautiful day, too. Let's all turn to page 186. 186. Sunday school class, which I'm very thankful for, is 
going to help, we're going to put on the presentation of the sounds of Christmas. You can find many, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Christmas is a time of joy. Bells ring to remind us to give to charities. We rush to buy presents, shake presents, and celebrate with holiday parties. But in all the hustle and bustle of activity, let's quiet our hearts for a few minutes to remember the very first Christmas. In a quiet village, a humble girl named Mary walked about and doing her normal business when an angel stopped her. Don't be afraid, he told her. I bring news of great joy. You will give birth to a baby boy. An angel also appeared to Joseph in a dream. He told Joseph to name the baby Jesus because he would save people from their sins. Joseph and Mary were filled with joy as they prepared to give birth to the new baby, God's own son in human form. Before Jesus was born, the Roman kings made an announcement. They made an announcement. Everyone had to go to their hometown to be registered. Joseph and Mary traveled to the village of Bethlehem. When they got there, they knocked on the door of the inn, but it was full. So they knocked on the door of many inns, but none of them had room for the couple who would soon give birth to a baby. Finally, one innkeeper agreed to let them live in a stable where cows mm, and donkeys usually slept. Before long, Mary gave birth to a beautiful baby boy and laid him in a manger where cows and donkeys usually fed on hay. At the same time, shepherds were watching their sheep Bad. on a nearby hillside. Suddenly, a bright light shone in the sky and an angel appeared to him. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you news of great joy for all people. Today, a baby has been born in Bethlehem. You will find him lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of angels joined the other angel. They praised God with a song of worship. When the angels left them, the shepherds said, let's go to Bethlehem and see this baby. They left their sheep and rushed away to find Jesus and his parents. When they found him, their hearts were filled with joy too. They worshiped the baby and they praised God for his birth. Then they rushed away to tell everyone the good news as they announced as they announced the birth of baby Jesus. God put his own birth announcement in the sky in the form of a special star. Wise men saw the star and they traveled to Bethlehem in search of the baby who had now grown to be a young child. Sometimes the sun shone and the birds sang. Sometimes the wind blew and the rain beat down, but the wise men kept on traveling. When they found Jesus, they worshipped him and gave him expensive presents of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The baby grew to be a man. He did miracles, taught about God, and died for our sins. This was the first Christmas, and Christ was the best Christmas present ever. Today, the Christmas season is still a time of joy. We rush around, we rush around in preparation and celebrate with the fun parties. The occasional church bell rings, the occasional church bell rings, okay, cool. But amid all the hustle and bustle, we need to find time to quiet our hearts and fix our minds on the Lord Jesus. We need to come to him with joy in our hearts and a song of worship. Here, do we have any praise or prayer requests? Father, we also thank you for the opportunity to fellowship today, and we just lift this time before you in Jesus' name. Amen.
real quick, I just want to do about a five minute little devotional, and then uh, we can uh, have a fellowship with the, the, the food and everything. But if you open up your bulletin, um, instead of having fill in the blank, I have basically the outline on the second page there for you. And uh, the passage is Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20, but I'm basically focusing on 8 through 14. And you can read that on your own there. But the birth of Jesus shows us a wonderful example of missionary work in action. First of all, we see someone who knew the Lord, and in this case it was an, the angel, came and told others about him. And the others that they told were, were the shepherds. Verse 10 says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. The second thing that we see there is that the messenger, which in this case is an angel, told, told them, which is the shepherds, that they could find the Lord. So the messengers told the shepherds how they could find the Lord. Verse 12 says, Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. The third thing we see is that the, the messenger gave praise to God. Verse 13, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. Fourthly, we see that the ones who heard the message, and this again is the shepherds, had a choice to believe or reject what they heard. And their actions showed that they believed by going to see the Lord. Verse 15 says, And it came to pass as the angels were gone away, were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. Verse 16 says, They came with haste. They didn't just come, but they came with haste. They were eager to see. The fifth point is those who received the Lord's those who received the Lord became messengers of his good news. So they were recipients, and now they become the messenger. Verse 17 says, And when they seen it, they had made known abroad the saying which was told them according to this child. The sixth point is others then heard the wondrous news about Christ. So the ones who had the message told to them became the messenger so others could hear. Verse 18, And all they that heard it wondered at all those things which were told to them by the shepherd. And then seventhly, the new messengers of the shepherds praised God just like the angels did. They praised God and gave him glory. Verse 20 says, And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. So someone else who knew Christ, and in this story it's the angels, had to come so that they could share the gospel. For us, someone else who knew, knew Christ shared the, shared the gospel of his salvation with us. Once they shared the message to us, we had, had the opportunity to receive it, to reject it. Upon receiving the good news, praise and glory is given, and we see that in Luke 15, 7 and 10. After we receive the gift of salvation, we then have the responsibility to go and share the same thing the same message with those around us so they can receive and believe. So the Christmas story is not just one of, of a little babe coming, lying in a manger, being born, growing up in this world, but it's an example of how we are all responsible to share the good news of Christ with others. So just in, in, a, in a quick, simplified format, Here's the Christmas message using different passages. Romans 3.23, that we are all sinners. Romans 6.23, that the payment of sin is death. Wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. John 3.16, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. 1 Corinthians 15.3 and 4, Christ died for our sins. He paid the wages of sin. He was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. John 1, 12, those who receive him become his children. And Acts 16, 31, those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. 
And that was that's the purpose of Christmas. Christ came to save us, to seek and save the lost. If you have any questions or just want to discuss it, I'm open to uh, at any time that you can come talk with me. But let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer, and then we'll I'll say a blessing on, on our, our fellowship time, too. And while they're getting it ready, I can use yeah. salt. Or yes, or yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this time. Father, we thank you for the true meaning of Christmas, that Jesus came, that he is a reason for the season. Without Christ, we could not have eternal life. Without him, we could not have fellowship and relationship with you that we are now offered. And we thank you and we praise you for the gift of everlasting life through Jesus Christ. That he didn't just stay dead, but when he died, he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And because of this, then we can have everlasting life to all who believe and receive and confess their sins. Father, we just lift this time of fellowship before you. We again thank you for the true meaning of Christmas. Help us to live that meaning with those around us so that others may know the good news and receive the gift of salvation too. Father, this time we also thank you for the for the fellowship that we're about to partake. We thank you for the food. And we just ask your blessings on this as nourishment to our bodies and, and the, for a good time of fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's turn to page 192 while they're getting everything ready. Wait. Why don't we just go around and say something we're thankful for, you know, for this holiday season? Would that be okay? I don't want to put anybody in the spot. If you don't want to, you could just say pass. But um, I'm just thankful for the church. I mean, I love you all, and we're just so thankful to have you here. And so we pray that you have a blessed Christmas with your families and enjoy yourself, you know. And, and we're just so thankful that... Um, you know, Christ was willing to come and take on the human form. I mean, God, God's own son was willing to come and take on the human form just so we could have salvation. You know, he could, he could grow up, die on the cross for us. That's a huge gift, you know. And like like our thing said, that's the best Christmas present ever is Jesus. So, Daniel, would you like to share anything? Or Just thankful for, uh, uh, as Julie mentioned, salvation. Um, for what, you know, the, the best Christmas gift that we could get is, is through Jesus Christ. But also, thank you for each and every one of you. Um, you guys are a joy and a blessing to know. And, and I'm just thankful for the opportunity to uh, fellowship with you all. John, did you want to share?